Well, the apron, as you doubtless know, is the part of the carriage that sits underneath the saddle and has all the knobs on it. So, we left the apron in early September, where I had partly repaired this shaft by machining it and making a new bush. But then I had this worn uh, V-groove, which is a detent for a ball bearing, and I wanted that welded up and recut to the correct size. As I didn't have a welder, I sent it to John Mills of the YouTube channel Double Boost, uh, uh, and he very kindly did it for me. So now we pick up the story. He, he actually uh, returned it in about a week, but I've been busy painting meanwhile, so I've only just got back to the apron now. So today I received the uh, shaft back from John Mills of Double Boost uh, YouTube channel. And he's not only uh, welded up those V grooves, but also recut them correctly. Um, it all looks fine to me. I'll give a link to the Double Boost episode where he, he did this work. Uh, he had to do more welding than um, he'd planned. Uh, and you see there are some occlusions here. That, that won't matter at all because they're all below the level of the OD. Um, I've got a new ball bearing and I think that's going to fit in there nicely. Right, so... This comes in from this end, and uh, I think this, this cock goes on that way. And then we have to put this roll pin in. This roll pin is specified as a uh, heavy duty one, but I can't find any heavy duty ones, so this is a light duty one, and it will just have to do for the meantime. If it breaks, I can always. change it. So now let's see where the, the cog comes when we put the ball bearing in. Right, well, that's the engaged position, and that is the unengaged position. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. So, here's the apron, but it is upside down, so this is the bottom of it. Um, this assembly here is normally, under gravity, is held in that position. And we have a slotted rod that comes from the feed gearbox, which applies feed and operates this gear, which operates that gear, and operates that gear. But because it's not engaged with anything, nothing happens. If we allow it to engage by operating this lever here, like that, then it starts, let me apply a little power to this power feed, then it starts driving the apron and the saddle uh, along the ways. That's disengaged, that's engaged. So now I see the nature of the mechanism. Let me turn the apron the right way up now. So now this is the right way up. And if I apply drive, nothing happens until I lift this lever. Now what's holding that lever up at the moment is that as I, as I lift the lever up, there's a hook down there which engages on a ledge. If I reverse the feed direction, 
You see, it fell down without my doing anything. This is because the hook is not engaging very effectively on that ledge. So that's a problem that I've got to address. So here's the lever. And if we zoom in down there. As we lift the lever up, it, it tilts this catch and also lifts up the whole gear assembly. That hook that you can see on the catch engages with that ledge. You can see to the right of it, just above the red bit. But it's very perilous. Let's see if I can get more light on there. It's that thing there, which is not quite reliably holding that catch up. So this is the ledge that the hook engages on. So the hook comes up like that and is supposed to hook over that ledge. And uh, I think you can see that it's a little bit worn. I feel this catch is a bit like somebody clinging by their fingernails to the edge of a precipice. It's always so difficult to show things in close-up. But there's the hook. And here's the ledge. And we go like that. But I think that this hook is only coming about that far and therefore it's not engaging properly and unless it can't come up any further because the lever comes up against the edge of the aperture through which, in the case of the um, apron through which the lever is operating. Just the top edge of this hook may be slightly worn. I don't know if you can see that. There which doesn't help. One thing I thought was, there's the ledge, if I were to mill half a millimetre off each side here, thereby bringing the ledge very slightly towards the hook, that might help. Well, after that adjustment, it seems to be working better. See, it hooks on properly there. not going to fall off of its own accord, which is what we wanted to avoid. I'm a bit worried as what's going to happen when I put this rubber seal in here, because that has a kind of tendency to pull this shaft back into the centre. So I'll just put that on and we'll see. By the way, I'd mentioned in an earlier video that a uh, YouTuber called Fixit Nige had suggested that the way to uh, replace this black rubber squeegee thing, uh, seal, oil seal, was to buy a rubber gaiter for a, uh, the steering of a car and cut, cut the end off. I did try that, but it uh, didn't seem to fit very well. And then I discovered this one, which is actually 3D printed by somebody selling on eBay in the UK. And this seems to fit perfectly, so uh, I'm using that. 
Uh, I don't know if the rubber he's 3D printed it from is totally oil resistant. We shall certainly find out in due course. So, you see the way it kind of stores that, but it still seems to be holding on. We'll test it under motion. I think the problem is solved. Good. And we have no need of putting that silly spring on the outside of that. So in the mode where the, the power feed is, is driving the apron or the carriage, this gear, that gear is engaging with this, uh, and this gear is not doing anything. If we then pull this back to the second indent, there, we're no longer driving this, but this engages with the gear underneath the saddle, uh, which operates the cross slide screw. Now, I was a bit uh, concerned about this because it's very easy Go on. It's very easy to pull this back past the second indent like that. The only thing that stops it is when this gear actually hits the side of the case. Um, so I was wondering if I should do something to prevent that, but then I realised that it's not necessary for a reason that I'll now show you. So here is the saddle which is upside down. So this bit bolts onto the top of the apron. And this gear, which when we put it in the correct position, it's quite a long gear, but when we put it in the correct position, only a little bit of it sticks out. So that big gear that was moving backwards and forwards in the apron it is moving in this slot here, and it can't go beyond this uh, edge here. So it's constrained in that way. Um, I don't, and hopefully the indent will hold it so it isn't actually rubbing this. Um, so I don't think there's anything to worry about there. Although, <laughs> I think it would be better if slightly more of the teeth on this gear, the width of the teeth, were actually engageable um, under power feed. But never mind, that's how they decided. And finally, we have this uh, assemblage here which uh, the slotted shaft slides in and uh, which couples the, the drive to the apron. Um, the problem with this is that it's very hard to tell from looking at the parts diagram exactly what's inside here, but what is quite certainly the case is that there's a shaft seal here and a shaft seal here, and I guess some bearings in there. And... I can see no way of getting these sharp seals out other than by hogging them out in a destructive manner. So, since it seems to be perfectly okay in terms of free turning, I thought I'd leave it as it is, um, at least until I see whether it's leaking or not. So, my plan now is to put the base on, fill it up with oil to the specified level, and see uh, whether any oil leaks out of here. If it does, then I'm forced to disassemble it, but if not, um, I'm going to leave it alone, and I'm getting bloody rained on. Well, final look um, of the repainted and reassembled apron, upside down as usual. It's the bottom. That's the front. The right way up. And that's the top. 
And there's the brand new oil level indicator in the side. Right. I put a magnet on the bottom of this. And I put Hylomar on both sides of it. And it goes like that. I wondered why these four holes were countersunk into here, but that's because there's a, a square rod that goes along here, which is very close to this uh, plate. Right, let's fix that down with the drain plug in. So we can now put some oil in it and hope it doesn't leak. Right, let's level that way and that way on the assumption that the top should be level, which it obviously should be because it bolts to the saddle. This is Castrol High Spin AWS 68, which is the oil specified for this apron. It only requires 0.3 of a litre, <laughs> and 20 litres was the smallest amount I could buy, so um, I'm not going to run out of this in a hurry, am I? Well, it's not really the kind of oil that I expect it to be in the apron. I should expect it sounding much thicker and yellower. But there you go. That's what the manual says. Right, here it goes. Well, I put a third of a litre in there, and there's no sign of um, the oil in the oil level window at all. So, I'm going to have to put some more in, aren't I? Right, I'll put some more in, and you can tell me if it ever gets up to the level of the window. Just appearing, just beginning to appear now. slightly overfilled now, isn't it? I'm just trying to work out how the oil gets splashed about in the box, but so far I can't see. If I operate the uh, feed thing... Yes, that is, that is stirring the oil. If I then engage the feed... Yeah, I think we can see that oil is getting up to here at any rate. I'm trying to bring it up here. I'm not quite sure why that's covered in oil at the moment. Well, oil is definitely getting onto this gear, which is getting onto that gear, which I guess will get onto that gear. There's nothing much getting it onto here, though, is it? Oh, yes, it is, because I think that the gear down there on this handle is picking up a little oil, which is then picked it up onto here.
Right. So, I think that's all right. And so far, there's nothing leaking from these, uh, this thing down here. So, I'm going to leave that overnight, and we'll see what happens in the morning. I'll put some cling film on it just to stop water vapour getting in there kind of thing, up to a point. Maybe I'll put this in, in the workshop where it's dry. Right, well I put it in my climate controlled workshop and uh, I'll leave it overnight like that and see if it leaks. Okay, so it's the next morning and I've inspected that apron and uh, it's not leaking, so that is fine. Um, before I go, I just wanted to mention uh, another YouTube uh, channel that I've been watching, this guy Kimber Zellick. Um, he's just taken delivery of this blue lathe that you can see here. Um, it's a Pratt & Whitney Model B lathe. Now the interesting thing about it is that its spec is very similar to mine. Uh, they both have a 13 inch swing. My lathe is 25 inches between centers. This Pratt & Whitney is 30 inches between centers. But apart from that, it's very similar. But the, the, the thing that interested me was that uh, this lathe weighs 2.7 times more than mine. Mine is about 1,200 pounds. This one is about 3,000 pounds. This Pratt & Whitney is probably designed in the 1920s, 1930s. My Harrison designed in the late 60s, early 70s. Um, the Pratt & Whitney, everything is cast. The Harrison, everything is cast above the swarf bed, but below it's uh, just welded... Uh, sheet metal, albeit rather thick sheet metal. I just thought it was an interesting comparison and uh, what he's been doing with that lathe is also quite interesting. You might want to, to watch him. Anyway, thanks very much for watching.